Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this weekend update for global markets and the Australian market. And certainly we saw uh, some terrific trends overseas during the week. Uh, not in Australia, Australian market very disappointing at the moment. So let's have a look at the, uh, the global situation and, uh, and also uh, the Australian market as well. So the American stocks gained 23 points on the week. That was uh, a really, really strong week. The index surged to a new all-time closing high. And it closed higher on every session last, last week and has risen 13 of the last 15 sessions. So it really has been an incredibly impressive rally. And even the small end of the market, the Russell 2000, is uh, also starting to rebound fairly nicely as well. Now, of course, the big announcement during the week was the fact that the ECB has uh, basically decided to go along the same path as the American Fed, and they've lowered interest rates to effectively zero and have a whole raft of other stimulatory uh, plans in the pipeline. The effect on the European stock market will be the same as the American stock market uh, because of all the extra liquidity, and it will force people who otherwise don't want to be there into the stock market because their return on fixed interest is just so poor. So a pretty major week uh, in terms of uh, global stock markets. So let's have a look at the American market to start with. And uh, you can see here the incredibly powerful run that we've had. So let's just pan back and take a look. If you focus on the red 150 day moving average line, you can see that this, the uptrend is still as powerful as ever, despite the fact that there are people calling for, uh, for a, a major correction or a crash. They're, I don't know what land they're living in, but it's certainly not in reality. You can see that uh, the trend is still really strong. We've had an enormously powerful surge the last two weeks after the market broke out above uh, the 1900 level. Um, there will be dips, but uh, the, the circumstances are such that I don't believe we're going to see a, uh, a, a very major correction in the market. Dips are good because otherwise it gets very hard to buy value. But you can see it's been a, uh, a very powerful run. It's a bit overboard at the moment, so I certainly would be cautious around the American market in general, although there are some, there still are plenty of opportunities where there are some great stocks, high growth businesses that you can still buy quite cheaply. But apart from that, a lot of the American market needs to, uh, to pull back a little bit. Let's have a look at the NASDAQ. It's also broken to new all-time highs as you can see there. So uh, they're heading along the same path. And if we look at the Russell 2000, uh, it's it's still off its highs, but you can see the last few days has been, been pretty strong. So all the American indices are clearly moving higher. Let's just have a look at a couple of the European ones. This is the, uh, the German DAX index, and of course the German economy going better than any in Europe. And it's been in a pretty strong uptrend now for quite some time. It was really uh, September 2011 that uh, this run started and the German DAX has almost doubled since September of 2011. And that was when there was fears about the uh, whole European Union falling apart. Let's have a look at the FTSE index. It's also sitting at all time highs. This is a really, really critical level here. As you can see, it's been uh, it's been touched so many times uh, that um, we are going to get uh, a significant move, I believe, one way or the other. If this index can't break through, then we could well see a bit of a sharpish correction to the downside. But equally, if it does break through, then I think we could see a major breakout because uh, there is so much um, pent up energy um, waiting to see which way this market's going to go. Now, let's go back and have a look at the um, the Australian market. By comparison, we were a very disappointing uh, 28 points down for the week. And look, it's, um, the Asian markets in general are, are less enthusiastic than, than Europe and America. Certainly the Hong Kong market, uh, the Chinese market, and the Japanese market have not moved ahead. But we've been the worst in, in Asia. Uh, and it's a real low liquidity patch at the moment where no one really wants to buy anything. I think there's a lot of things feeding into it. It's uh, partially about China. 
and the concerns of what's happening there in uh, the property market and also the steel industry. Um, but there's just generally a really uh, low level of consumer confidence throughout the Australian economy. And I think that's really, really being seen in the, uh, in the stock market. Traders just aren't prepared to step up to the plate at the moment in the Australian market. Now, this will pass. We get these periods uh, and it will pass and we'll, uh, we'll see the really good companies and the really good opportunities move back into uptrend. But at the moment, it is what it is. And uh, you've just got to recognize that and, uh, and, and just be really, really focused on what you're doing in the Australian market. So most traders being reasonably negative in the Australian market. Let's have a look at our um, our individual sectors. This is the material sector, so BHP and Rio predominantly. You can see it's really quite well off its highs and was actually down on the week. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the banks. The banks obviously doing much better. You can see the moving average still pointing up in the banks. The index still above that moving average. So it's really only the banks that have been holding our overall index together. Healthcare still going along pretty well. And this is the overall ASX 200. Now there's still a bit of an upward bias, but that's really uh, completely down to the banks. If that hadn't been the case, then the ASX 200 would be heading, uh, heading down uh, quite decidedly. So We've just got to wait out this uh, this period in the Australian market. There's not really much else that you can do. Let's look at commodities. Gold gained $2 on the week. And there was a little bit of divergence with the gold mining indices. In other words, they went up a little bit more than, uh, than gold did. And particularly, and I think this is really interesting, particularly with the GDXJ, which is the, the junior gold miners index. So we'll have a look at those charts in just a minute. Silver has, has really, I guess, broken down, but it's really just hanging on by a fingernail to, uh, to that level. If it drops another 50 cents or so, I think we could see a sharp move down in silver. So you want to stay clear of silver for the time being. Copper slipped fairly sharply from 315 down to 305, which was not a great sign. Um, but crude oil was reasonably steady at uh, at 102 that's the uh, the chart the six month spot copper price chart now let's just go and have a look at gold so first of all the uh, the price of gold itself in US dollars you can see went up just a little bit on the week we had a bit of a dip at the start of the week and then a little bit of a recovery towards the end of the week but it's overall, it's still in this big phase one base. It's about a third of the way off the bottom. And the ultimate, um, the ultimate test that gold is moving into a new bull market will be a close above around about 1430. So that's really what we're looking for. But it is possible that gold could retest this 1180 mark. In fact, I, I think there's at least a 50-50 chance of that happening. Let's turn to uh, the GDX index. So same setup here, overall a big phase one base, not that far off, off the lows and no real signs yet of, uh, of turning up, although it did do just a little bit better than gold itself. But this is the junior index. Had uh, Thursday and Friday were quite good sessions. You can see much more positive candles and bigger volumes moving into the juniors. And that's really interesting when the juniors uh, moving ahead of the rest of the market. It's um, often a pretty good sign. Now I missed out on silver, so we'll just go back and touch on silver. So if we pan back, you can see this is a really, really important level. If this breaks, then we're going to get a move down towards the 15 to $16 mark, I believe. So pretty important that um, that silver holds these levels. But as you can see, it really has gone below the, the lows that we saw in, in December of last year. So not a particularly great sign there. Now, just wrapping it all up in the overall uh, way to approach the market, 
members, of course, are, uh, are well and truly across this, but for uh, non-members that might be watching this video, the ECB, the European Central Bank policy on uh, low interest rates and uh, increasing stimulus to stave off deflation will be emphatic for European stocks. Uh, the American stock market has all already responded a fair way. Uh, there, are, there is still pockets of value, really good value in America uh, to be found. Um, but I think we're going to see outperformance from, uh, from Europe from uh, here on. Our local market, struggling, poor liquidity. Uh, as I said before, we've, we've really just got to uh, wait it out. You can't make the market do anything. You've just got to accept the opportunities as they come to you. My overwhelming advice is to stay focused on the assured growth sectors. Uh, there are certain sectors of our economy and certain businesses within those sectors that have got um, a really high probability of being able to continue to grow their earnings. But most companies that are just focused on the Australian market are going to struggle to, um, to grow their earnings in the way that they have in the past. So you need to be uh, very focused on those sectors. And you must do these three key things, particularly at this time of year. You must be buying great businesses, not stocks. And there is a, a distinction if you stop to think about it. A lot of people just focus on stocks, any old stock they want to buy, at a low price and sell at a high price. And they don't give too much thought to the downside risk and the volatility. If you buy great businesses and you buy them when they're below fair value, then the probability is enormously in your favor that the price is gonna go up. You don't know necessarily exactly when, but you know with a high degree of confidence that it will go up. And at this time of year, that's the sort of thing you need to be doing. And the final thing is, of course, you need to be buying dips in strong trends. There are, there are great businesses that uh, are trading below fair value, but for whatever reason, the price has not, been in, has not been trending. It's been going sideways, or in some cases, there are a couple of pretty good Australian stocks where the prices have been going down purely because of market perception. So you need to make sure that you, that you are focused on strong trends and buying the dips in those strong trends as well. Really, really important this time of year. Now, for anyone that wants uh, more information about uh, what we do in special share education, you'll find more information on our website. And also, if you wish to contact me directly, then there's my email address. Always happy to uh, communicate with, uh, with other traders. That's it for this week. Cheers.